So that is where we are at this moment. And I feel very strongly that uh, the world must take note. We must not wait until a situation like in Zimbabwe or other parts of the world. Do you think Mr. Malema will ever face quote unquote justice for his singing the kill the, kill the boer and many of those sort of stuff? Well, firstly, we will have to wait for the appeal case uh, on the 4th of September. Uh, I think uh, there is a good case to make that uh, it is hate speech. If uh, the court decides that it is not hate speech, of course, uh, we can, uh, and the people in that uh, case can even go to the constitutional court in the end to see what happens. But, you know, it's interesting, even a person like Mr. Tabu Mbeki, a previous president of South Africa, is on record. But he said there's no sense in singing the kill the word, kill the farmer anymore. He is on record where he said that was a struggle song when there was still a struggle, but they are the government now. And, I mean, we see, for instance, uh, just uh, earlier this week or last end last week, that there was an attack on a farm and where the victim said that... Uh, the criminal said, kill the world, kill the farmer. They uttered that slogan. So the Freedom Front Plus, I laid a charge against Julius Malema. It's a criminal charge, not on the song, because the song, as long as there's not a court case, because we must also say that the finding of the fact that it is at the present not hate speech is was done by the Equality Court. But now they're going to the high court. So that's a difference. Let's see what comes out from of, of that. But I laid a criminal charge in terms of the Rioters Act in South Africa. And there's an article in there that says quite clearly that you are not allowed to instigate violence. Now, the song is one thing. It's kill the world, kill the farmer. But Malema also at the and said, shoot to kill. Now, that's not part of the song. That is something else. And to have a meeting and then say, shoot to kill, as far as we are concerned, that's a contravention of the Rioters Act, and that is instigating violence, and that's why we laid the charge. Uh, the investigation is uh, taking place at the moment. I get uh, some updates, uh, regular updates from the investigating people, investigating the matter. And uh, in the end, the docket will then send to the prosecuting authority and they will have to make a decision whether they're going to prosecute or not. And if they do not, then we can even start with a private prosecution. But That's I do believe, some other way, that Julius Malema will find out that he is not above the law. There are different cases. I mean, uh, the fact of uh, firing an arm in a public space and everything, and some other charges. So he may get away in the meantime. But I do believe in the end, he is going to pay a price. That's that's very interesting. So shoot to kill is not part of the song. So is, is this the no. first time? Is this the first time he has sung it? Shoot to kill that that, that bit. No. Well, that specific word to use there there, but we also laid a charge that earlier, or it was I think yes, last year November, uh, in the conference uh, of the EFF in the Western Cape. Uh, he then actually went further saying that a revolutionist must be able and willing to die for the cause. And he referred to the incident at the school in the Western Cape, and he actually lambasted some members of the EFF, whether they were cowards and did not rise up, even if they had to kill. And he said a real revolutionist will kill to obtain 
its aim in the end. So that's also a charge. So there are two charges from the Freedom Front Plus. I also like that charge in Cape Town. So uh, let's see what the outcome is going to be. Interesting. And what do you see with international organizations or international law? Are they relevant here, like the UN, the United Nations? Will they take any steps in terms of um, criminally, okay, not criminally, but um, penalizing Mr. Malema in any way? Well, first, let me say that if I have to explain the international situation on kill the bird, kill the farmer. Uh, even in the early 2000s, we in the Freedom Front Plus uh, laid complaints with the Human Rights Commission. In fact, there is a report. Hillary Clinton at that stage was in, at the head of that uh, of the Human Rights Commission in the United Nations. Uh, and our complaint was uh, reported and recorded in the annual report of the United Nations. Now, firstly, I want to put it very clearly, the Freedom Front Plus welcomes any organization, person, people, whoever, who is using the international platforms to make the international world aware of uh, the slogan of kill the boer, kill the farmer, and we support them to continue with that. However, my experience when it comes to international organizations is that they will, they are very hesitant to interfere with the internal affairs of a sovereign country. Let's take Zimbabwe, for instance. I mean, all the atrocities that took place there, I not, didn't even never saw that there was a real intervention from the international world. So I want to put it to say again, yes, continue with that. But I am not that confident that they will intervene at this moment as far as that is concerned. But it is also very good, like, for instance, Elon Musk, who reacted to the matter, and if we can get more international known people to act to that, then it puts pressure on the South African government. Because the question is, I never heard anything from our own president to say that stop with the singing of kill the world, kill the farmer. And uh, he should have reacted. We must also remember that Mr. Ramaphosa at one stage a couple of years ago at New York denied that there were any far murders in South Africa. I took the matter up in Parliament a couple of times with him. And yes, in the end, he did say that uh, they condemn uh, far murders. Uh, but we must also remember far murders it's not only white farmers, there are black farmers murdered, and it is also including the workers of the farm. Uh, so there was a change, but I am going to, well, I'm asking the question to the president, why didn't he react on this allegation of kill the world, kill the farmer? Irrespective whether the Equality Court uh, declared it that it is not hate speech. He should have put an example because kill the bird, kill the farmer is not promoting and enhancing nation building in South Africa. And there's a constitutional obligation on the president to enhance nation building. And in terms of that obligation, he should have stood up and say, no, let's stop this. Yes, it was a struggle, son but it is creating divisions in South Africa. So let's stop it. Mm. A person like Elon Musk, it seems, got a lot of flack for saying, when he tweeted about kill the boer, kill the farmer in South Africa, he said that there's a white genocide, that they, it seems like there's a white genocide going on in South Africa. And a lot of people responded, but come on, I mean, there's not a white genocide happening in South Africa. W what is your take on that? Well, if you go to the experts, they have uh, different stages when, at what stage you can say that there is, uh, and specifically talk about the white genocide in South Africa. The red lights are there, but as far as they're concerned, they say we 
not there yet, but there's an obligation on us to ensure that we do not get there to have a white genocide. Uh, so I suppose, and yes, you will always get people who will give some flack to people who wants to put certain truth on the table. So that is where we are at this moment. And I feel very strongly that uh, the world must take note. We must not wait until a situation like in Zimbabwe or other parts of the world. I mean, there are many other parts, specifically in Africa. If you go to the North and South Sudan at the, uh, before they became two different uh, states, I mean, it was huge genocides. If you go to Rwanda, Rwanda is the well-known country where there was a genocide. But the international world took too long. Uh, they've read it incorrectly or they didn't want to read it. So we must prevent that we in South Africa get into such a situation where minority groups, not only whites, but minority groups are threatened and where there is a possibility of a genocide. Mm. I guess the the argument is we should we shouldn't get too tied up with the legality of any issue. If one white person is killed, that's one white person too much. Of course, it's as simple as that. I will even go further. Uh, one person killed is one too much uh, killed. In South Africa, if you look at our murder rate, and yes, if you go and look at the statistics, there are many more blacks killed in South Africa than whites. Uh, there is no doubt about it. But we must ensure that nobody gets killed in South Africa. Absolutely. Absolutely.